This is part 23 of refurbishing a vintage model steamboat and it's about the gas boiler firing system and a couple of important modifications. First of all, the gas system. Here's the gas canister going into place. It's quite a tight fit if you put it in the wrong way, like I'm doing here. Anyway, the gas canister's in place and the next thing to look at is the gas tap. And somewhere on the bench is the gas tap. Yes, here it is. Now this is a commercial gas tap and it's quite good. One thing I don't like about it is the plastic hand wheel. I don't really like plastic hand wheels anywhere near a heat source, although in reality the heat source is not going to be anywhere near the gas canister. In any case, there is a problem. The height of the deck and the height of the plastic hand wheel do not match. The plastic hand wheel is taller than the deck. If I put a ruler across, you can see this. Not only is the hand wheel taller than the deck, the metal part is also taller, but that can be machined away. When I started to remove the hand wheel, and I thought it was held in place by the normal lock nut, I was quite surprised to find that no it wasn't. It was just pushed onto a piece of hexagon like this. It was a pretend lock nut. So using a big pair of side cutters, I cut away the plastic hand wheel and was left with this. And once I'd cross drilled the hexagon part and turned down the top of it, I have a valve that is ideal. It's exactly the right height and very easy to get hold of. I'm securing the cross piece, which is a piece of stainless steel, with some Loctite 638. But before using the Loctite 638, I roughened up the centre of the crossbar. This will give a good key for the 638 to grab. And once I applied the 638 to the crossbar, I rotated the crossbar so it spread it within the hexagon part. And once the Loctite had cured, I refitted the threaded part to the main body of the valve. Inside this nut that I'm currently tightening, there is an O-ring seal. So the whole thing is completely gas tight. And here is the modified gas valve. And it's nearly ready to fit into the boat. But before that, I'm going to put some silicone rubber tubing on each end of the crossbar. This silicone rubber tubing is a commercial item, inasmuch as it's the outer insulation of some wire that I bought for wiring high power batteries to radio control cars. The gas system is now ready for piping. I have to connect a pipe between the gas valve on the left, which is the manual tap, and the emergency gas shutoff valve on the right. The servo operated gas shutoff valve goes on the servo tray that I made a few episodes back. The pipe run is going to be quite long because the servo tray is at the stern of the boat and the gas tank is at the bow. Here you can see the servo tray and you can see the servo that's going to operate the gas valve, which is the one on the right and the servo on the left is going to operate the rudder. That's it for the gas system, I just need to pipe it. Here's the boat with the centre superstructure in place, and I'm just showing how easy it is to remove this. As you can see, you just lift it off, you don't worry about the fitting of the safety valve, the flexible pipe takes care of that, and you can position the superstructure on the boat wherever you want, and it's very easy to get your hand in, even my very large hands, to refill the displacement lubricator, turn the steam off, and lubricate the engine. The practicalities of running a model steamboat are always important to me. Any superstructure must be easily and readily removable, including the safety valve cover, but in reality I'm struggling with this. So using a device called a knurling tool, that begins with a K in the lathe, I did this. This freshly knurled part on the safety valve cover makes it very easy to grab it and remove it from the safety valve. And I will now demonstrate this without the aid of a safety net. The safety valve cover is a good fit on the safety valve. It seals well on the O-rings at the bottom of it and it's very easy to remove. A cloth will be required of course to remove this cover if the boiler is in steam. And this will grip the knurled part even better than fingers. Down in the depths of the boat lurks a fitting that I do not require. This was the original water inlet from the boat to the pump to the boiler. And I really do not want to use this in this installation. I don't want to fill the boiler with dirty lake water. That's definitely not a good idea. So I made this very simple fitting to cap off the water inlet to stop any water coming into the boat. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.